Hello. Today we're going to look at the latest version of SQL Explorer and some of the new features that we've added into it. Um, the first thing I want to show you is probably the coolest thing that we've uh, done here. And rather than using a traditional portal down here to display our results, we're now using a web viewer and a data URL. And when it loads, it actually looks uh, a fair amount like a FileMaker portal, but this is actually a, a web viewer. Um, and the reason we did this is because it's a SQL query and not a static portal. We, we don't know what the columns were going to be or what the data types or, or any of that kind of um, information. So being able to control that dynamically in the HTML that we load here uh, works great. Um, and we can determine kind of a, an initial column uh, size here based on the the, uh, either the header or the information itself. So something that looks a little bit better than just static portal columns. Um, we can also kind of resize these columns so the end user can you know, customize their look uh, even more. Um, might want to bring notes up a little bit here and you know, do that kind of thing. Um, we've got uh, column sorting by clicking on the headers, which is always a nice feature. And that's something we can do in FileMaker, but it, it kind of comes for free with this plugin, which is neat. Um, and then probably the neatest thing as far as kind of working in the portal itself is that we have the ability to actually drag and drop columns. So we can uh, really customize um, our view in a way that would be very difficult to do in FileMaker. So um, pretty neat, uh, and we really like the way it works. Um, one of the other cool things about it is since this is HTML, we can actually export that HTML um, to our temp directory and open it up in the browser and kind of get a fuller view of what's in the portal with all that same functionality. Um, it's just a static document. Again, all we did is export the uh, data URL to the temp directory and then have the browser read it. But that's, that's kind of neat. You know, we can have two uh, versions of the same information and I can sort one one way and sort one the other way, um, which is kind of nice. Um, originally, the reason that I built this in was not to be kind of an end user facing feature. It was more for internal debugging um, because you don't really have any debugging tools when you're working in the web viewer. So if you bring it out into the browser, you can use your you know, developer tools here, depending on which browser you like, and, and, uh, and troubleshoot that way. And that was uh, very invaluable. And I realized, um, well, that's kind of neat. We'll just leave that in there if people want any debugging and also to just see it in a nice uh, bigger view. Um, once we made that decision, we decided to throw in another feature that comes with this uh, plugin. And that's their uh, search engine which is a different UI than ours. It's this all any kind of group subgroup thing, which is kind of neat. And uh, one of the, there's a couple reasons that I like it. Um, in the, you can work kind of more complicated stuff out here, do something like a staggered range. We'll say greater than a thousand. And then, uh, sorry, equal to 2000. And then we'll do another one. Whoops. We'll make cost uh, greater than five thousand and less or equal to six thousand. So then I can refine my uh, results here, which is neat, um, and I can just do it in this document if I, you know, had another one of these open. But you see what it does here is it actually creates the query for us up here. What it's doing, and that's the SQL syntax. So I can actually now just copy this and bring it back into my main query here and paste it in and it's going to work just fine. So for some folks who aren't as familiar with the FileMaker uh, search UI and how to build these things, going over to that any or working some stuff out there and then bringing it back here into their FileMaker SQL, you know, I thought that was a pretty neat thing to include. So we're really uh, pleased with this uh, web viewer um, and uh, HTML technology working in FileMaker. Just kind of a quick overview of how it works. We've got a layout here that's got all the JavaScript libraries as static text. And what we do is when we open the file, we export all these um, to the uh, temp directory. 
and then our data URL references them in the temp directory. That way, when we open it up in the browser, it can reference back to those same uh, uh, files in the temp directory. And we do the same thing with the CSS. And the idea that you might want to update your CSS um, is very probable, even in SQL Explorer, if you were incorporating it in as a report engine or something like that. So we actually built a little system here for updating the CSS so it'll be easier to keep in line with your FileMaker CSS. Um, you can start with the theme that we built, and it uses jQuery UI theme roller, which is really nice, so you don't have to be a CSS expert. Um, you can use the tools here and build your theme. And here's the one we're using in SQL Explorer. Um, you can look at their gallery and grab one in here, like uh, let's grab milk chocolate. And we can edit that if we want, or we can just download it as is. I'm just going to go ahead and download it as is. You see it's going to drop the zip on my desktop. That's how I've got it set up. And when we open that, there's the CSS we're looking for. So we can use our import tool here, and we're going to navigate over to that CSS. Go ahead and grab the minified. And we've imported it along with its uh, referenced images. And now when we go back and run our query, we see we have the <laughs> updated CSS. So not a perfect fit there. Um, but the idea of keeping these web viewer CSSs in line with your FileMaker CSS is a lot less intimidating if you, if you build a system like that. So that's kind of an overview. You can also check out, um, I've got some more information, including a lot of the links back to the jQuery Grid plugin, which this is built in here in our documentation uh, web viewer portal. And this is the uh, jQuery Grid plugin we used. Um, from these folks and uh, you know the documentation and all the information here is, is great. So that's kind of the main uh, cool feature. Um, some of the other things we wanted to do were for ourselves and uh, you know for other folks was to make this a little bit more of a powerful reporting tool and one of the ways we did that um, is you see when you run this query we give you the, uh, actually, let me go ahead and <laughs> clear that uh, CSS out because that's going to be kind of distracting, huh? <laughs> All right, so we'll go back here and uh, rerun it with our uh, one that matches Onyx nicely, and you see how quickly um, it is to change those back and forth. Um, so you see that we kind of interpret the, the field names as best we can, but those aren't always uh, custom, you know, um, friendly to the person who's actually going to be reading this result. And you know if we do our exports, that we include those uh, headers in the exports as part of the reporting tool. So one of the things we wanted to do is give you a little bit more uh, control over that and that we're going to use the as um, keyword in uh, FileMaker, I mean, I'm sorry, in SQL. and um, our code will read what you've designated as the as, and we'll use that for your header. And as is, a, is part of the SQL uh, language and can be used for unions and, and things like that. So if we say uh, as company name, and I run the query, we see now we just get company name. Well, I'm going to make it look a little bit nicer with some spaces. So I'm going to put a space in there, and then I'm going to run it. Oh, but I get an error. And that's because if you're going to use a space or any kind of reserved uh, funny character in your as columns, you want to make sure you double quote them. And once you double quote them, uh, then you've got no problem. And this is a, a nice, uh, nice thing for building uh, your reports. And those, will, again, will show up um, when you export as your CSV or as an Excel. Let's see, we got a company name there. Oops. So uh, we think that's kind of a nice feature. Where it comes ev in even handier is where you might be doing something like this, where you're going to use a calculation that references a couple of different fields. Uh, so it's you know hard for a SQL Explorer to know what to use for a header there. We do a pretty good job at it. So let's just say we have it like this, where we haven't put any as on it. Select case when C cost is greater than 5,000, blah, blah, blah and it works and 
but we get this case when, and, and we may not want to show that to the customer either. So putting the as here at the end of that expression uh, is really useful when you're doing uh, those kind of um, those kind of queries. Um, and as well as putting them in our exports, we've also included it in our abstracted calculations. So if I go to the data viewer here and paste this in, we see that we've added this small section here that has those headers in it and basically saying, hey, if you want to see those headers in your results, go ahead and enable this line, otherwise leave it as is. So if we evaluate this, and it doesn't look that great in the data viewer, but you get the idea, um, and this is still disabled, we get just the data. But if I enable this, then we get the actual uh, headers there. So if you're doing a virtual list report, and again, your field names might not be uh, very pretty to the outside world, having a, a tool like this could be a useful thing. And, and we've certainly found it useful for ourselves. Um, the last thing we've done here is just kind of a, a, a little uh, afterthought that uh, we uh, had an internal need for. So we went ahead and threw it in SQL Explorer. Um, and it's something that every FileMaker developer should be aware of. And that's that there's these internal tables that aren't part of the graph. And there are FileMaker tables and FileMaker fields. And you can access these in SQL Explorer and in using regular execute SQL and get information about your database. So it can be a really nice thing. And we've actually got the ability to use table name here to even create a little join report. So we've done that. And if we look at what we've built, if we say select table name, you know, for these different reserved uh, words for the internal SQL from FileMaker tables, and then we've actually joined them together, um, we get our results like this. And this gives us a readout of all of our tables and all of our fields, the field ID, the field type in SQL. So text becomes varicare, date is date, uh, the field repetitions, and the field mod count. So having exposure to that kind of under the hood information via SQL is something, again, that every FileMaker developer should be aware of and, and something we wanted to build into SQL Explorer as well. So uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching and uh, please download uh, the latest version. Thanks very much.